Welcome in to another episode from Everything Has History. In this episode, I'll be continuing on my Who Is Real series. I started with Deadwood and now I'm moving on to Vikings. I will be discussing Vikings in this episode and there will be some spoilers and discussion of plot points. So be fair warned, there will be spoilers. The show Vikings was one of the most watched and successful period shows of all time. It was a gritty mix of politics, war, love, violence, and destruction. Additionally, it brought to the forefront many important historical figures that were real people. While the show moved around actual timelines and character interactions, it did an excellent job of bringing some of these forgotten figures to the public eye. One of the main things to consider in this study of whether these characters are real is that many of the plots and storylines in the show were based on Norse and Icelandic sagas as well as English history. Especially in the sagas, it is important to remember that while a real person was depicted, they were sometimes posed with supernatural challenges to further enhance their legends. Number 1. Ragnar Lothbrok we can't talk of Vikings or any history of this time period without talking about the main character Ragnar. The first part of this series focuses on Ragnar's rise to power in the Viking world, beginning with his conflict with the Jarl of Kattegat, to the invasion of Lindisfarne to the Siege of Paris and his eventual disappearance and his re-emergence. His sons Bjarn, Uba, Fitzirk, Sigurd, and Ivar became the main characters of the show as it progressed. One of the most interesting storylines was his attempts at taking Paris, which produced some of the best battle scenes in the series. Throughout the show, he professes his ancestral relationship to Odin. His death is definitely a link to the Eddic poem in which Odin sacrifices himself to himself for the acquisition of knowledge and the runes. We find him hanging in a tree, just as Odin was hanged in Yggdrasil. Ragnar even has one eye in his death scene, as Odin did. Odin sacrificed his eye to acquire knowledge as well. He is dropped into a snake pit but stays defiant until the end. The real existence of Ragnar is still debated among historians. He or his namesake is mentioned in several sagas including the Icelandic saga, the saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, the Heimskringla, Sogabrot, and the Herevrar saga. The show loosely follows the events of the saga of Ragnar Lothbrok. He is mentioned in a historic Danish document, the Gesta Denorum, as well as a series of books written by 12th century historian Saxo Grammaticus. He is also mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which is considered a reliable source. The 9th century document discussed the history of the Saxon people and the early history of England. There is a reference to a Viking named Ragnall, and Ragnahiris in 840 AD, both of which can be interpreted as referring to Ragnar Lothbrok. The other piece of evidence that leads to his true existence were his sons and direct offspring. All are confirmed as, as to have existed and were extremely important in this time period as mentioned before. Uba, Ivar the Balmless, and Bjorn are pretty much confirmed to be the offspring of Ragnar. His death is debated how it really took place though but propaganda was created in the Viking world and was used by the Great Heathen Army in the wide-scale invasions of England in 865, an invasion of which Danish and Norse forces occupied many parts of England. Ragnar is one of those historical characters and people that likely existed, as the Norse tradition was mostly an oral history and very few writings come from the perspective of the Vikings, it is likely that Ragnar was real, or at least an amalgamation of several different people. The sagas in which he was referenced was written centuries after he lived. The contemporarily written Anglo-Saxon Chronicle is likely the most important source we have as to the existence of the real Ragnar Lothbrok. Number 2. Lagatha Our second character was the main female protagonist of the series. In the show, she is Ragnar Lothbrok's first wife. Her rise in the series to a place of prominence is one of the fastest in the show. As the series starts, we find her working on a small farm with Ragnar and her son Bjorn and daughter Gita. Initially, her and Ragnar have a loving relationship and she acts as his main consul during his rise to power and glory. 
However, her most important relationship is that of the relationship she has with her first son Bjorn. We watch Bjorn grow from a boy to a man throughout the series and Lagatha is one of his main guideposts throughout. Lagatha holds her own as a warrior as the series progresses and becomes one of the best warriors in the show. She gains the lofty title of Shield Maiden and even by the end has ascended to one of the highest leadership positions in the show as an Earl or Jarl and comes to one point to rule Kattegat, the community that is at the heart of the show's world. Lagatha, or a person resembling many of the show's characters' traits, is referenced in the 12th century history known as the Gesta Donorum, written by Saxo Grammaticus. She is referenced as fighting alongside Ragnar Lothbrok during his battle against the King of Sweden to avenge the death of the Norwegian King, Sievert. It's quoted, Lagatha, a skilled Amazon who, though a maiden, had the courage of a man, and fought in front among the bravest men with her loose hair over her shoulders. All marveled at her matchless deeds for her locks flying down her back, betrayed that she was a woman. Another aspect of the account states that she was instrumental in winning the battle for Ragnar. Quote, Lagatha, who had matchless spirit through a delicate frame, covered by her splendid bravery, the inclination of the soldiers to waver. For she made a sally about and flew around to the rear of the enemy, taking the unawares and thus turned the panic of her friend into the camp of the enemy." End quote. Many of the saga sources refer to her as having the abilities of a Valkyrie, the winged spirit who would bring the dead to Valhalla to sit with Odin. It appears that Lagatha was a real person, at one point or at least an amalgamation of a couple of different shield maidens that existed in the Viking Age. Much as Ragnar sourcing from the Norse side is very rare, and the histories of these events were written centuries after they happened. Number 3. Rollo Rollo, of all the characters in the show, becomes one of the most complicated. He's portrayed as Ragnar's older brother and is, and is continually grappling with his role in Ragnar's society and his love of Ragnar's wife Lagatha. He is quick to temper but one of the strongest warriors in the series. There is also some debate that he is the real father of Ragnar's oldest son, Bjorn. Rollo and Ragnar are at odds for much of the show's run and are uneasy allies. But in the end, Rollo follows his own path and takes a deal to become the Duke of Normandy after the ill-fated Siege of Paris. This becomes the main linchpin for Ragnar's second invasion of Paris and his attempted revenge against Rollo for his betrayal. Rollo becomes a member of the French nobility in order to protect Frisia, as it was known then, from further Viking invasions. Some of the scenes in which Rollo is trying to assimilate to French noble life are some of the funniest moments of the show. The real Rollo is probably the most well-documented of the Vikings characters. He was definitely a real person that would go on to shape European history in a massive way. The show portrays him as the brother of Ragnar, however, this was not the case. Rollo was in fact born long after the supposed birth of Ragnar. The real Rollo was believed to have been born between 860 and 870. He was believed to be a large man that could not ride a small horse, according to Snorri Sturluson in the Scandinavian sagas as well as the Heimskringla, he is referred to as Rolf the Walker. But in real life, he rose to notoriety after he attempted to sack Paris. French King Charles III defeated Rollo's army in 911 and negotiated with him to end his Viking ways, and granted him land in northern France in what would later become known as Normandy. The first contemporary record of Rollo is from 918 in a charter that refers to Rollo's land grant. One of the stories that permeates from Rollo's time is when he was asked to pledge fealty to Charles III as part of the peace treaty. During the ceremony, he was told to kiss the foot of Charles, and Rollo allegedly stated, I will never bow my knees at the knees of any man, and no man's foot will I kiss. Instead, one of Rollo's men pulled the king's foot to him as opposed to Rollo kneeling down. Rollo is believed to have died between 928 and 933, however his legacy is tied directly to his descendants. 
Over the generations after his death, they assimilated to French culture and began referring to themselves as Normans. His great, great, great grandson was none other than William the Conqueror. In 1066, William the Conqueror would go on to successfully conquer England, thus altering the destiny of the island and the continent itself. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of some of the real-life counterparts of characters from the epic show Vikings. I will be doing a part two, as there are many more great historical characters based on real people. If you enjoy this video, check out my other Who Is Real series on the HBO show Deadwood. Also, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode from Everything Has History.